In this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how we produce $229,000 from a $34,000 ad spend in just three months. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna pull back the curtain and show you exactly how we did it. The campaigns we used, the ads we used, literally everything. And if you stay to the end, you're gonna leave this video with a clear action plan how you can replicate this in your own ad account. So let's jump in. Now I'm gonna not reveal the actual brand itself for privacy reasons, but these are real results, okay? You can see here in the last three months, well, 1st of Jan to 31st of March, $34,000 spend for $229,000 in revenue. This is a high ticket ticket brand. So the average order value is quite high and you can see the uptrend that we were able to uh, cause. We came in and started working with this brand in January, early January. And um, yeah, pretty cool uh, results there. I'm going to refresh this as well. Uh, this is absolutely real results as you can see. So let's jump in and have a look at the campaigns that we used. Because as you know, within Google ads, and this is specifically a Google ads uh, strategy that we used, your structure is your strategy. Okay. With Facebook ads, it's your creative. That's your strategy and that's your targeting. With Google ads, it's very much just how you structure your campaigns because Google ads is not very creative reliant. Still in 2025, it's predominantly media buying through search ads and through shopping ads. Okay. It really comes down to your structure. What's you know, audience segments you're targeting with each campaign, why you're choosing to segment campaigns out rather than consolidate them together. I'll explain as we go. So firstly, you can see a non-branded shopping campaign. This was really the hero campaign. I'm filtering by cost here. Uh, and you can see this campaign spent $18,000 in these last three months and produced $70,000 in revenue. Then we had a performance max campaign, which spent $7,000 and produced $34,000 in revenue. Then we had a branded shopping campaign, which of course did produce a lot of revenue because it's a branded campaign. Now, to be honest, I'm not even going to talk about this. We're not going to say, oh, look how good we are at this, you know, crazy 10x campaign. And that's the thing. You've got to take Google ads results sometimes with a pinch of salt. A lot of gurus will try and show you their crazy 10x rise and um, hide the fact that the branded campaign caused a lot of revenue. That's not what I'm going to try and do here. Okay. You know, branded campaigns are, again, you know, it's like they're they're important to run. They're important to have so that you can defend your own uh, branded searches against competitors and increase your visibility. However, you know, you don't want the majority of your spend going there. And that's not where the majority of the spend is going. The majority of your spend is going on cold traffic. So we had an, uh, have another cold uh, search campaign here. We have a branded search campaign here, display remarketing here, and then a demand gen that's not really doing anything. So it's a very classic Google ad structure. Okay. You've got your shopping, you've got your Pmax, you've got your search, and you've got your remarketing and you've got your branded campaigns. It's really by the book, which is why I love this account. Okay. So let's break this down. How did we do this? So in the shopping campaign, it's very simple. We're just targeting. First of all, we, we're using a target ROAS of, of, of a 3x. You can see we're, we're achieving a lot beyond that. Well, you know, not a lot beyond that, but at least a fair bit beyond that, which is a really good sign. We're probably going to start to push that TROAS up a little bit. Um, however, sometimes if you want to scale, it's good to keep the TROAS lower and push the spend up because as you increase spend, efficiency comes down. So, you know, it's actually not a good idea to try and increase spend and increase the TROAS. If anything, it's better to decrease the TROAS as you increase the spend so that you can continue to spend more. So here we really just have some of the best um, performing products. These are the product uh, groups. If we go to the actual products themselves, we have um, essentially, uh, yeah, basically their best performing products in here, which I won't go uh, into in too much detail. Uh, but yeah, you can see rich, really it's just these products here that are producing the majority of the revenue uh, when you filter by spend. Uh, and again, like I tweeted about this the other day, but sometimes you don't want to have this like overcomplicated structure. Sometimes, especially if you don't have a huge amount of SKUs and especially if you're a high ticket brand where people need to see your products multiple times and you need to spend quite a lot to acquire a customer because your product is more expensive, it's better to have everything in one campaign, right? Just lob everything into one shopping campaign. And see what happens and consolidate data. That's exactly what we're doing here. It would be a mistake, let me make this clear, for us to have a shopping campaign for each of these different products, because then we are not able to gather as much data, drive as much spend and produce as, as, as great results as, as we can. You can see here the price of these products, you know, $1,000, $500, $1,500, $600, right? So yeah, you don't want to segment, especially with high ticket, you don't want to segment out your campaigns uh, too much, okay? If we just go back to all campaigns here, that's that's it, right? That's the, that's the, the hero standard shopping campaign, okay? Now we also run a performance max campaign and we have a uh, 
feed only uh, asset group here, which has performed really well. And then we have an asset group for a specific new product that they wanted to launch, but it is the uh, feed only asset group that is doing uh, most of the work. And if we jump to the listing group level, you can see it's targeting the same products as um, the shopping campaign. So this is really like a fallback performance max campaign, because remember, shopping campaigns can now outrank performance max campaigns. This was a, an update that came out in Q4 of last year, if it has a higher ad rank, which it almost always does. So this is really a supportive fallback performance max campaign. It kind of used to be that Pmax was the forefront and shopping was the fallback. It's very much flipped on its head. But this has still been very useful to clean up some additional conversions. It's been very high ROAS. It's been a very successful campaign and shopping will often miss things, right? So it's very useful to, to run this and I would I would definitely recommend it. You know, I think the, the, the kind of playbook for us is having a performance max campaign that captures your entire product catalog pretty much, gathers a bunch of data and a shopping campaign for your best selling products because that's going to allow you to scale further. It's also more incremental, okay? You just have more control in a shopping campaign. You can have, add negative keywords to Pmax, yes, but with shopping, you just have high levels of control over your exact uh, keywords you're showing up for, et cetera, et cetera. I won't, I won't bore you with the details. So that's that. And then obviously branded shopping. Um, basically, the only kind of nuance here is that we have added negative keywords in. So when we go to keywords, you will see that we have uh, a script going on here, which is basically adding a ton of... Uh, keywords in and it's really just branded keywords that are triggering these ads to show okay so yeah you've got the list list here that's really causing all of these uh, things so basically the, the way branded shopping works is you negate all uh keywords that are not your brand name so it's only your brand name keywords that are actually triggering um the, this campaign to serve and that's what makes it a branded shopping campaign and the reason why you want to run this is because it protects your brand so when someone searches up the brand name and you may have competitors bidding on that on your brand name it's your shopping ad that shows up at rank number one not anyone else's, okay? Moving on, we then have non-branded search. Okay, so this is pretty self-explanatory. We have a non-branded search here, a campaign here, uh, which is running on maximized conversions, okay? So we're just maximizing the amount of conversions that we can get within this campaign. And we have ad groups, and the way we're segmenting out is basically by keyword theme. So this is the best way to segment out your uh, search campaigns in uh, 2025, is by grouping them together by theme. So here, obviously, infrared sauna is the theme. So anything, any keywords related to infrared sauna, because we can then have ads that are tailored to infrared sauna, we can have images, image extensions, we can have ad extensions that are all related to infrared saunas, like you know, product extensions, etc., which is going to be the most relevant ad for that search, which is going to improve your quality score, which is going to improve your ad rank, and that's going to allow you to uh, perform better, basically get cheaper CPA, uh, CPCs and more clicks, more scale, right? And so that is that. Do not use SCAGs, okay, where you only have one keyword per ad group. It's just not necessary anymore with broad match, uh, which we're using pretty heavily here. As you can see, this broad match keyword spend two thousand dollars and you know broad match is really the heart and soul of search now we really just scale with broad match keywords we start with exact and phrase we find winning keywords we test them on broad and then we let them scale it's kind of like creatives with meta right you test a bunch of creatives you find one that, that performs well and you might kind of put it in on its own campaign and let it scale kind of how we're doing here you know we, we're finding the winning broad match keyword and then we're letting it uh, fly okay so that's how we're running search pretty simple not spending an awful lot to be honest with you at least you know at the moment because we have such a success, we found such a success with the shopping campaign. And also, by the way, this brand is starting to go into that off season. So we are lowering spend throughout the account, um, but it's still been a very successful year nonetheless. And then we have, of course, branded search, which is very, very simple and pretty boring. I won't show you that. It's literally just the keywords uh, within the brand. And then we have a display remarketing campaign, also on a very low budget, but this is essentially just cleaning up website visitors, add to carts, et cetera, with images. It's gonna follow, follow them around um, and essentially just lead them to convert. Again, oftentimes you don't see direct conversions from these campaigns because Pmax or you know search or shopping will take the credit when that sale actually happens. But super important to run, especially for high ticket products where you know you're someone's making a thousand dollar buying decision. You need to be seeing that brand and that product multiple multiple times before you actually go ahead and purchase. All right, and having a simple campaign structure is better. And eventually we'll get to a point where you pretty much just have one campaign, and you know we'll let Google's AI do all of the heavy lifting. Okay, and then it just becomes about strategy, brand strategy, your offer, your product, your 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 margins, your PNL, um, your ability to use great creative, great messaging, etc. Okay, but I'll leave that there. Now, if you are interested. In, in having our help with your Google Ads strategy, there'll be a link in the description to book a call with our team and we will actually set up our Google Ads infrastructure into your uh, account for a one-time payment. Zero agency retainers. It's a pretty good offer. You should check it out. And then if you just want to learn our Google Ads secrets that we've you know kind of gathered over tens of millions of dollars of ad spend at this point, you can also look at our A to Z Google Ads lab course as well down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.